Yeah, English is weird. Yeah, yeah, definitely very, very weird. But it's cool and it's weirdness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I had this idea that I did this, and I went through a few drafts. I was going to think about maybe that instead. And then I kind of thought, maybe that, you know, and then I went like that, and then I thought, no, that's actually only one grammar correction away from my friend Matt's um, presentation. He, he, if I just change that into, into <laughs> be his presentation. So I decided to go after something uh, that maybe I could get my teeth into a little bit more, uh, something much bigger and language acquisition as, as, a, as a strategy or as a, uh, as a tool in itself for people. And I decided to go after something very big, in fact much bigger than smartphones or, or language or you or me. It, it's something like that, you know? Nice. Yeah, yeah, right? And so I thought about that and then I thought I don't really want to alienate anybody too much with stuff like that, right? And, and actually, frankly, I'm in danger of alienating myself with, with all of this stuff. <laughs> Which is kind of the point, but not the point. Because. So I kind of went through a few other drafts and I thought maybe that, but you know, I'd have to put a doctor before my name if I wanted that and, and have uh, citations and I, I, don't, I, I didn't have time to look to, to get references. So um, I kind of thought maybe that's a little bit more fluffy, you know, <laughs> that we can all kind of relate to a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure exactly what my presentation is in the end, to be honest. But, um, something like that, you know. <laughs> that thinking about the experience of the learner as some kind of a journey that they're on, right? And in a way, I, I got, I've gotten this this impression over the last couple of years of teaching students that a lot of them come to Galway and it's more than just learning the skill of learning a language. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a spiritual journey. It's kind of like other people might go to India or something like that. <laughs> right. And so I was kind of playing around with this idea and I thought, yeah, there's a, lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot of comparisons you could draw, right? I mean, in a way, you very much are taking a pounding to your ego when you're learning a language. It's a very brave thing to do you're having to divorce yourself from your culture uh, and your language and really, really just become a kind of a non-human for a while. A kind of a jellyfish without, a, without any kind of, you know, just a membrane. And <laughs> laugh. You know, people, people are laughing in groups and you're, you're part of the group and, and you, you know, if you've learned another language, you know what this is like. You can't, you can't get involved, you don't have a role you don't have any kind of responsibility, which is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, and, and yeah, you, you're basically, you've lost your identity. So it's a total loss of ego, in a way, right? Uh, and you kind of have to do it alone. And I guess that comes with uh, raising your consciousness, right? And, and that learning a language is very much a consciousness raising process, right? And I suppose if we're going to be teaching, like they're really encouraging us to teach now, uh, where we're focusing more on learner autonomy, then it's up to us to not so much give the, the grammar and the information, but to kind of act a little bit like a spiritual guru for the, uh, <laughs> the, the students at hand. Some kind of a guide. Um, it's as much about personal development and managing stress, and being conscious of your own motivations and your own processes, as it is about knowing the difference between the past simple and the present perfect, that kind of thing. So that, that was, that's my kind of an idea, and, and you guys know this already, at least I, I think you're all aware of it, but I know that we kind of forget about it sometimes, and we're better teachers when we are that little bit more aware of it. I think we teach better we empathize more and we're less um, um, we're less judgmental, yes. Regardless of the, the material at hand and regardless of the actual tools we're using, we're somehow connecting better with the students. And that's why, yeah, I, I don't have much, uh, I don't have any citations, I don't have any 
uh, studies to back this up, so I want to keep things a little bit mysterious for now. <laughs> so, uh, here's a question. Uh, has anybody had a fight with their partner yet today? Today? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's a little bit too early for that, but... Uh, yeah. Another question. Yesterday. Why, why is it when young men travel uh, abroad that they want to always learn first the, the bad words in another language? Mm -hmm. yeah, what's that all about? Um, and it's, you know, it's not just young men, it's, it's, it's lots of us. We all, we all somehow want to know these, these very powerful things that are going to affect somebody on a psychological level. Does anybody know why? Could be a form of self-expression. Form of self-expression. Yeah, yeah. It can be useful to show our disapproval in this situation. And if you're learning a foreign language, it's always better to call it something funny rather than if you're trying to be in a serious situation and you make a hint of that. Yes. But if you curse in a foreign language and then you get a kind of a humorous reaction, you're like, ha, ah, great. You know, whatever I did was funny, so yes. however bad or good I pronounced it will be. So you connect with it as your own different level. Yeah, exactly. And, and you, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, it's all about really just trying to feel a little bit less alone in the universe, right? If, you, if you're getting some kind of an emotional response from somebody, then in a way, you're kind of winning at life, because that's the whole point. It's a connection, I suppose, right? And it's kind of the most, the, the most um, okay, inarticulate way of trying to get some kind of a, a an instant reaction off somebody, and it doesn't matter, it's, even as adults, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, right, in a lot of cases. Um, so, I try to be a little bit more sophisticated when I travel, but essentially it's the same thing. <laughs> I ask this question, uh, how could you? You know, just say that randomly to somebody, how could you? In a very emotional way. And uh, you, you'll instantly get a response because that's built in, it's just hardwired into them. And then you, you sit proud because you've affected somebody uh, you know, on, on some level and you know if you got it right or wrong, right? Another thing I'd like to ask maybe is something like, uh, don't you dare, you know? And the, the, the opportunity for these things come up all of the time. And then another one, you know, you could ask something like, have you forgiven your mother yet? <laughs> it just just to kind of put people on edge and feel feel empowered with the language, right? And uh, that's my other little idea. All right, first one is the guru thing, and then the other little idea I was thinking is okay. We want to learn a language. We want to learn a language. We don't want to learn it on an intellectual level. We want to learn it on a kind of a gut level. And I always try to use ways of of getting that into the students as much as possible and somehow harking back to, into their emotional reservoir and experiences uh, it, and, and using that as a tool to, to remember stuff, right? Um, so, yeah, their experiences as children. Uh, by the way, also, memes are incredibly good because they're, they just represent, they're really good as an emotional shorthand to something, some situation, and use them. I, I use them, if you want to talk about how I use them, I can do that. I was going to talk about that in my presentation, but I, 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 think, I think you guys are creative enough to, to, to figure out your own ways of doing that. Um, but I, I do use them all the time, because you know instantly if you got it or you didn't get it, mm -hmm. and, it's, uh, and you can scroll through just a load of memes, and something will hit you, and you'll be like, there, got it. Okay, I'll remember that. I won't forget that. Mm -hmm. Because it hits you on an emotional level. And that's, that's the idea. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about my experience. I was traveling a little bit, and actually I did have to say that line as part of uh, a show that I was doing, kind of theater music show, uh, and I, I wanted to say it in, in the language of the place where I was visiting. And I found I had trouble with um, German. And you know, I studied German in school. I shouldn't have any trouble with German. And it wasn't, it wasn't really the grammar, although that's hard, it was my motivation, actually. I was having trouble with my own motivation with German and also with, uh, with Dutch. Um, and I, I, and I, didn't, I wasn't really aware of the fact that I was having trouble with my motivation with it until I went to Brussels and I was just walking around the, um, the Congolese district and hearing how people speak there. And they're just much more emotive in the way that they express themselves. They, they really enjoy the words 
in their mouths. <laughs> French. And you can really get into that. And although my French is much, much worse than my German, I found I'm, I'm myself speaking a lot more French and trying a lot more French, maybe failing more, but, but really just enjoying it a lot more. And um, that's leading in. Uh, for, for those of you who are like, what about smartphones? Um, <laughs> there will be smartphones. <laughs> So, yes, I ask my students uh, every week to record themselves speaking. I don't like listening in on conversations. I actually, I'm terrible. I, I can't focus on one conversation, and uh, I've tried. I just don't have that talent. So what I ask them to do is record yourself any time you want. You can even walk out of the class at any time. Record yourself for one minute, two minutes, whatever, speaking about something, and I can set them a task if they need it. But usually they don't, because very often they're addressing you uh, directly, mm. and they're they're probably going to talk about something that's most important to them at that point, right? And of course you can focus it in the direction of grammar, or whatever. But I listen back, and okay, it, it's great because they're addressing me directly. I can I can really get into the nitty gritty of where they're going wrong. For them, it's a consciousness raising process because they're hearing themselves back. They do different drafts of it as well. But the main thing I really want to focus on is the, what, what are the qualities of this person's voice? And what is the character that they're conveying or that they're trying to convey? And what kind of character do they want to be in English? Or try on at least. I found myself with French it was very much like going into some kind of second-hand shop and trying on a coat that I wouldn't normally try on, or like a Hawaiian shirt. You know, it's not me, but it's fun. I'll, yeah, I'll do this, I'll get into it, it's exciting. And to, to get that idea with the, with the student when they're speaking, to kind of reflect a little bit on experimenting with their own uh, voice and enjoying that enjoying that process. So that's, I, I don't really have much of a conclusion either, except, except that. <laughs> yes, I find myself saying that more and more with students. Here are your mistakes, here's all, everything that you did, but experiment. I see that you, you have an interesting voice or you, you phrase that in an interesting way. Maybe you were more present with the language and this, the the, the production of the language mm -hmm. at that point. Why was that? And they'll find them, they, they'll, the learning will take care of itself.